question here from Marco should be pretty straightforward as to what exactly the question is here, which is showing you know how to add the Ichimoku clad as a trend filter. However, I'm going to expand upon this question here um, and kind of dive a little bit into you know some of Bloodhound version 2's new capabilities here, which is so what we're adding the Ichimoku cloud uh, filter is we're adding it to a previous um, uh, workshop question here. So right, so we're going to take a uh, the Bloodhound template from right uh, a couple years ago. Um, let's see, well about just a little over two and a half years ago here, right? So this is going to be kind of like a two-part dual kind of question here, uh, which is grabbing a system, all right, from an older workshop and then adding kind of like your own customizations to it. And so in this uh, case, the Ichimoku now um, as a trend filter here. So, yeah, so actually answering, answering the, the direct question is the easy part here. All right, so first thing I want to do, so I'm just kind of thinking ahead here, kind of thinking how I want to plan this out. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up, you know, right, the previous Bloodhound system here. Uh, so that way I can copy um, the system out of it and then add it into today's workshop file and then add in the Ichimoku cloud as a trend filter here. And just to kind of give us a look ahead here, you know, kind of like our 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 goal here is to get something I guess looking like this here all right I'm um, sorry so one more thing that we need to take care of before we continue on is showing everybody how to get a hold of the Ichimoku indicator that I'm using on my chart today all right so this is coming from Ninja Traders user app share um, right, so I'm actually on the direct download page here, but if you go to Ninja Traders ecosystem, uh, right, they do have a user app share on Ninja Traders website. Probably shouldn't have to show that, but here is the actual indicator, and I think there might be another Ichimoku indicator on the user app share, but I could be mistaken. You know, um, I know in, in back in Ninja Trader 7, there were a couple of Ichimoku indicators on there. So um, for Ninja Trader 8, you know, there may be, maybe only be there this one indicator on here. So um, when the recording does get posted, uh, we will have a link to this indicator. Um, so for example, in the future, on the training workshops page where right where we do post the recordings and we have this list of all the workshop indicators every once in a while you know for kind of the, uh, for kind of these um, I don't want to say unusual because <laughs> the Ichimoku is not an unusual but every once in a while we do post the links you know f for these indicators um, and I'm trying to see if I can find a link here just to for, just to give an example. Um, wow, well, yeah, I guess it's been a while since it's been necessary to post a link here. Well, all right, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but sometimes, you know, up here, you know, where we have the Bloodhound links and the chart template links, sometimes there'll be an indicator link here. So. So the point being is, yeah, we'll we'll um, have a link to uh, to this specific Ichimoku download here. So now that we got that out of the way, all right. Next step, or yeah, the first step here is to open up this older Bloodhound system. So that way I can copy it and then paste it into today's workshop file. So with that, uh, let's see. All right, so I have another chart. Um, so I always have a secondary chart here that I can work with. You know, the swing indicator is not a part of this. It's probably just a, a, a leftover here from a previous question here. But I do need to add 
put bloodhound indicator on here. All right. There we go. So let me open up bloodhound. And then I'm going to open up this older workshop file here. All right. I'm going to have to scroll down a little bit. There we go. So that looks like the older workshop file. And we want the Reiko higher low and lower high signals. Um, so there we go. All right. Pretty simple, straightforward. So what I'm going to do is select everything I need. And then I can copy that to, and that copies that to the Windows clipboard here. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll take a quick moment here to kind of explain this here. Right, so again, this is um, a new feature of Bloodhound version two. So this is really kind of, yeah, one of the main key points here that kind of separates Bloodhound version one from version two is that we now have some copy and paste functionality, um, right? So if I open up Notepad or any kind of text editor, I can paste what we just copied, right? And so basically this is what we're copying um, is all the settings, you know, all the settings for these nodes here um, is saved in this kind of universal standard format, which is called XML. So let me, let's keep moving on here. So I have that copied. Um, so I can get rid of that. Um, and, oh, actually, I'm going to, yeah, I'm just going to clear that out here. So I'm going to clear that out there. So that way, um, that way, this chart is not using up any other, uh, you know, unnecessary CPU resources here. So I cleared that out. And all right, let's just reload the chart. There we go. So let's get rid of that chart. And so now I'm going back into today's um, Bloodhound file here. And. Let's see here. So let's paste those nodes that I just copied. There we go. Um, and let me give this let me give this question a name here or this logic template a name. So all right. So there we go. So that's what really this question is all about. We're just taking the scenic route to answer the question. <laughs> so, all right. So now that we have yeah the um, previous system in here, we can now add the Ichimoku cloud as the trend filter here. Um, and so we're gonna. I'm gonna have to also. I guess a a, a, a another secondary part of this question is. Um, exploring this Ichimoku indicator. So kind of probing around here to see how do we access the cloud direction, you know, as a trend filter here. Um, so I, I, when I'm kind of um, exploring what a, I don't want to say new, but it's new to me. So this is kind of a new indicator to me. Uh, or at least this this specific version of the Ichimoku is new to me. So when I'm kind of probing around on an indicator, I will usually start with the threshold solver. So let's connect that up. And let me kind of shrink things up a little bit again. Here. All right, so with the threshold solver, I'm going to load in this Ichimoku indicator. There we go. All right. And so now, so once once I have this this indicator um, loaded into the threshold solver, I can now kind of take a look at all the different plots here. All right. And I can see that there there's only the traditional plots. So the Senku span, yeah, plots are there. So there actually 
is no kind of specific output that tells you the cloud direction. So just double checking here. All right. So I can't use the threshold solver for this. So I'm going to get rid of that solver here. Let's get let's delete that. And so what I actually need is the comparison solver. All right. And so what we're comparing is span A to span B. And span A, I believe, is the green line. And span B, I believe, is the red line here. And we'll figure that out here. We'll verify that in just a moment. All right, so I'll just kind of give myself a little notation here for what this comparison solver is doing. So I'm comparing the span A to the span B. All right, so input A will be span A. All right, so there's our indicator. Oh, and let's put in all the period settings. And also uh, remember to um, change the cloud displacement to zero. All right, so first thing I want to select is the span A. All right, so the Senku span A um, for input A, right, we want to select that for the long and for a short output. Next, for input B, we're just doing the same thing over again. All right. So once again, load in the Ichimoku indicator. Set our periods up. There we go. And then we're going to select span B. And let's see if everything looks correct. All right. Yep. Yeah. So there we go. So far, so good. Yeah. All right. So there we have it. So for this uh, particular um, Ichimoku indicator, we had to use a comparison solver. And we just simply compared the span A plot to the span B plot, all right? So if span A is above span B, then the cloud is in an uptrend, all right, and vice versa. So that's all it took. And then we can just connect that into this AND node. And that's that. that was it. And let's see. Let's see, I'm not getting any signal. All right, let's disconnect that. <clears throat> and let's see. Oh, well, there we go. All right, so there's some signals. Yeah, so on this long uptrend, there we go. Now we're getting some signals. There we go, and on this Pretty lengthy downtrend. Yeah, there we go. There's some short signals. There. So now, um, so this um, higher high, lower low system here that we copied out at that older workshop, you know, it only had one AND node. So, you know, so this looked very simple, right? So I just took the Ichimoku cloud and connect it in to the only AND node there was. <clears throat> so, uh, but the general rule of thumb here, you know, and of course, there is no single answer for every system, but the generalized rule of thumb here is that when you're creating a signal filter, that, that, that signal filter or that trend filter, usually goes into the last AND node 
in the system here. Um, so, for example, right, this previous question here, um, all right, the first question that we answered in the workshop actually has two AND node. So, if I wanted to apply this, this um, Ichimoku cloud trend filter to this system, which has two AND nodes, then, let's see here, there we go. Let's drop it in there. There we go. So, oh, oops, I added two. So, normally, you would add a trend filter to the last AND node in the system that is connected to the result node, right? So, in other words, like that. So, that's the general rule of thumb. So, but, sometimes your trend filter or your filtering every once in a while, you know, it may be more appropriate to add it to an AND node some, somewhere upstream to your logic here. But it all, again, it all comes down to the details. All right, so that, this is the actual answer to Marco's question about adding an Ichimoku cloud as a trend filter. And tomorrow, um, yeah, once again, for tomorrow, there, there is a Blackbird question. So this does have a secondary component to this question here. Mm -hmm.